Elixir, proudly sponsors Smoke to Paint on Saturday. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to VaporTrails.tv. I am your host for the next hour. My name's Andy Smoke to Vape. It's the SOS show. That's what it's called, and here I am. Sutton on Saturday, or Smoke to Vape on Saturday. You take your choice. Take your choice. Right. Well, we just had a great time in the pre-show, and then everything sort of fell over, and, and now we're a little bit late. But if you're watching this on the pre-record, nothing happened. Welcome everybody, let's go and hang out with chat for a bit. It was quite a sunny day here in Bristol. It was very nice. I hope everybody else has had a sunny day. And everything looks like everything's settled and it's all it's all fine. So I'm going to get on with the show. Get on with the show. Yes, yes. Um, last week, if you didn't catch the show, you will have missed... Stuff. And has that VT disappeared? Probably. Yeah, it has. <laughs> no, it hasn't. Here it is. I found it. If you had, if you, if you didn't tune in last last week for the SOS show, uh, here's what you would have missed. Um, new kit, new monitors. One, two, three, four. Oh, that one's not really got much to do, but but still, it's still intimidating. So that's a bit unsightly, and my run order's in the way. There's supposed to be a bit more desk room, but um, a bit of kit that is, make, makes that possible didn't show up this week. Basically press the button, and it, it's a PCC. We've seen them before. I put one on at 8.22. It's now 8.22. Yeah, 8.22. So that lasted an hour. Let me show you who we're going to be sending this to. We're going to be sending it to one person and two organisations. We shouldn't stop. I have just clicked a button. That means an awful lot to me. What that video contains can make people think about things in different ways. Nico Pure Labs in the United States. And hazelnut, crimson leaf, crimson leaf, crimson leaf, crimson leaf. Oh, crimson leaf, okay. Wow. Okay, crimson leaf is a tobacco flavor. Good throat hit. You know, MEPs coming to our way of thinking and that will only increase and improve if we keep spreading the right message out there. SOS and keep tweeting. That's right, keep tweeting. Um, more on that coming up in a minute. Hmm. Um, yes, so, uh, yeah, the bit of kit that I was talking about that was supposed to clear desk space um, is just in front of me right here, actually. Um, Daz, in Skype chat, thought it looked like a snake eating an egg, where, in fact, it's just a microphone on a stick. So, um, yeah, still trying to get the positioning of it correct so it's not obscuring anything but it's better than it was because now I can cut happily to this camera and you can see my desk is clear apart from a beer I'm a poet and I didn't know it um, yes that beer as well is for everybody who has been in Twitter jail yes that's especially for you if you've been tweeting like a good one and I think we all have and it's been very 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 productive lots of people are, are coming round to, to you know I, I watched the uh, the the, the past shows on Vapor Trails TV and seeing an MEP sitting at her desk saying that she has a lot of tweets that can only be coming from one source and that's us people that is us so yes so um this week um I got a a bit of vape mail I was approaching this week thinking well I haven't really got very much to talk about apart from smoke without fire which is going ex 
extremely well and I thank you all for your fantastic pledges and your support and your messages on Facebook. It's been absolutely fantastic. And the total at the moment is um, uh, 5,715, 138 pledges and there'll be more on that um, coming up in a bit as well where if you have pledged you'll get a little shout out. Mm, you will. I won't mention how much you've given because I realise that's personal information, but I will give give everybody who's pledged a shout out live on air. Well, not live, but you'll see what I mean. Yes. And also, I've got to add as well, I got a, a new bit of software this week as well that enables me to put sound effects on everything. So keep your ears peeled. And uh, yeah, I went a little bit crazy. It was late when I was cutting one of the VTs and um, yeah, I added quite, quite a bit, uh, but you'll see. And one of those VTs is coming up now. Um, I got in the mail some vape mail. And uh, this little blue doofer on the end of here is what this VT is all about. So without further ado, thanks for sticking with us through these few little technical hitches we're having. Well, it looks like we're having technical hitches. It seems to have calmed down now. So um, here's my VT about my vape mail. I've got vape mail. It just uh, it was just handed to me by my lovely wife, who you know from the uh, Facebook page from the Smoke Without Fire campaign. She's the one behind the scenes when I'm at work, keeping all those interesting articles popping up and chatting with you all. So yes, she just handed me this uh, slightly delayed, admittedly, but um, yes. So let's have a look what's in the bag. Right. I might add that this isn't all from one vendor. I will tell you who the parts are from, but this is the one that I'm most interested in. This is the Pro Tank. So you could say tonight is a bit of a tank spectacular, really, because um, I'm not only looking at the uh, the BCC vape only mini, but I'm also looking at the Pro Tank, um, which, looking at the box. It looks looks quite special, doesn't it? Um, somebody um, who I will try and remember live um, told me about this and recommended it, so I went and ordered one. Yes, I'm excited to try it. I'm I'm looking forward to that. Um, I've also got this little beastie here. Yes, it's the uh, the octopus, or the the yes the octopus. And I was really surprised when I took the. Um, the rather fetching blue uh, top section off that um, it comes wicked and coiled ready to go so why don't we load some juice up on it and see how it vapes amazing right looking at that it's uh, one two three four five six coils and the thing that interested me with this little beastie was that um, it's actually got little um, little nuts, knurled nuts on there. Uh, it's not just a, a stick the wire through and uh, tighten up a tiny little screw. It's actually, you can do it without tools, which is I thought was quite a nice touch. There's quite a lot of wickage in there, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to remember what that looks like. Actually, let's have another look just quickly. That is, right, okay. That is lots. That's why they call it the octopus. Looks like an octopus. Hello. Um, leave my legs alone. Um, right, it's talking to me now, so I better put some e-liquid on it. Now, I don't quite know, is that supposed to be a, is that 510? Let's, let's, um... No! Not 510. Maybe that's just, like, a big drip tip. Whoa! Maybe that, maybe... Let me just, let me see. Let me see if there's another drip tip floating around here somewhere. There's never one when you want one, is there? Oh, here we go. Let's see. No! No, it's just a massive drip tip. The whole tip, the whole bit. So that makes me wonder if that's going to spit juice at me. Mmm. Right. Well, I think it's time to put some juice on this and see what happens. I'm actually going to crack open the Evo watermelon. Let's drip some juice on those wicks. This is 24 milligram 
uh, watermelon from Evo. I'm just going to drip some in there until it looks like all the wicks are wet and try and hit the, some on the coil as well. Now what I'm going to do is just screw it onto um, my UDT-L. It's just got an 18... Ooh. Since dropping the juice on it, one of the wicks has decided to pop out and say hello. Now, if this is meant to be a drip tip... Oh, I just took the top off. That's not a good idea. Right, let's put that back in there. That's fine. Right. It's firing. Good vapor production. These things usually take a little bit of time to get. Mmm. That is full on watermelon. Wow. Nose hit as well. On EC Wizard, they they say that this is a perfect tasting, experimenting juice dripper. They could they the people who made this could have made that aperture a little bit bigger just so it would fit a 510. It's not spitting any juice at me, but when I did try and try take a draw, if we have a look just there, you can see the air hole. Now, Mick Jagger would have a bit of a problem with this because you put it in your mouth and your lip occasionally covers up the air hole. Um, no juice in the mouth, actually. I thought I had, but it's just the flavour of the smell of the e-liquid. Producing lovely, lovely, flavourful, watermelony vapour. Again, I'm going to spend tomorrow morning and the afternoon thinking about these juices, and hopefully my cold will have gone a bit more by tomorrow night when we're live on Vapor Trials TV. And, um, yeah... I like the concept of this, and it does look quite interesting, like a little stubby. Also, because I didn't wind the wick myself, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on the Darwin. I've already got my, uh, my other little dripper on here that I was trying some juice earlier. And uh, I'm going to see what this meters out at. Right, that is coming out at 2.1. So, yeah. Mmm. Just that little bit more oomph from the Darwin just seems to be sending it just that little bit further. Lots and lots of throat hit on that one. Still good flavour, no burnt taste. Just getting to the end of the juice there. So there is the octopus. Interesting. Interesting little beastie. Now, it'll be interesting when I re-wick it. Re-wick it. Uh, went all oh, Jonathan Ross there, sorry. Um, re-wick it. That um, get the configuration the same. Because that is working really nicely. Um, six coils. Pre-done. Arrives wicked. And, uh, yeah, a good dripper. And they're right. If you want to try flavours and, and experiment with, maybe you're mixing and you want to try a flavour, it is annoying when you drip onto a an atomizer. the flavour tends to linger. I mean, especially watermelon and stuff like that. But really, so simple. You can basically, all you need to do is, is re-wick it and you've got fresh, flavourful vapour once again. Let's press the button. There it is, spitting away beautifully. Right, so that's 2.1, so I could go up a little bit. That is putting 3.5 volts through it. That is putting 4.4. Got to give that a go. So this is uh, 8.5 watts on the Darwin, and uh, this is uh, 4.1 volts, which is normally my sweet spot. <laughs> White out. And it found some more juice as well. No juice in the mouth. Um, the wicks do pop up again. They pop up now and again to say hello. But um, I haven't had any juice in the mouth. Um, and uh, it's a good little dripper, I'd say. 
And I went for the blue one, just, you know, just to be a bit different. I suppose it's sort of sea inspired, being that it's the octopus. So that's from EC Wizard. Um, I'll 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 get all the information, and when you join me live on Vapor Trails TV, I'll tell you about how much it costs. This I might add is the mini octopus. There is a bigger octopus. This is 9.98, I think. Let me just have a look at the um, paperwork that was sent through with it. Um, 9.98, yes, um, from EC Wizard, and uh, I got this with my order as well. Uh, it's their little documentation of uh, the situation with the EU. So um, yeah, that's that's a good thing to see. Coming from a vendor, that's great. That is great. And it's a, a well-worded, slick, clean thing that says contact your MEPs or your MPs. Hmm. Keep that in mind. Anyway, um, right. So about this, it is it is 510 fitted at the bottom. So I've got this on an extension on the Darwin. And this is running at the moment at 8.5 watts. And it's putting 4.3 volts through it. And watermelon, the Evo watermelon, is an accurate watermelon flavour. Not sort of candied, but accurately watermelony. Now, watermelon actually was one of my first juices I got when I started. And I tried to review it, but I was so new to vaping that my taste buds hadn't returned yet. But now, I'm really appreciating it. It is a very nice fruity flavour. As you can see, that was a white out. It's a producer. Um, let me go to this camera here. And uh, you can see that there's not a lot of distance between the top posts and the top of the, what is in effect, the, the top of the rebuildable atomizer. And it's the drip tip as well built in. And as I said in that VT, I just want a drip tip on it. I don't know why, it just seems it's new. I haven't had anything like this that is straight on there. But it's an interesting idea. The air hole is big enough, it's giving me a, a pleasant draw, and it's producing really nice vapour, and with six wines, it comes pre-wound on there, as I said in the VT as well. It's really producing very nicely. Lovely. It's very good. It is very good. Um, let me just take this off as well. It's got uh, two O-rings. I've had absolutely no leaking issues with um, the amount of use I've been putting on there. The the wicks, as I said, and as chat have been saying as well, there are eight. Um, that's what's called the octopus. Obviously, if you if you rewick it differently, you might end up with a, you know, just a a, a dog if you only use four. But if you put eight, you've got an octopus. So I'm going to try and re-wick this during the week. I'll probably video it, knowing me. And um, it might be part of my rebuildable diary. I'm also going to attempt to put um, a stainless steel wick in it as well. I don't know if that'll work or not, but it'll be worth a go. So there we go. I'm, you know, it's a good, as they say on their website, it's a good little dripper that is good for tasting juices. It, the the flavour is fantastic. I don't know what wire it's got in there pre pre wound, whether it's canthol or um, the other. So I'm going to put whatever I've got to hand and uh, see how it goes when I've done it. Um, there's always that feeling that when you do something yourself for the first time, it's not going to be as good as when it arrived from the factory. But um, I'm going to keep this one and use it as a reference. So this arrived for me in vape mail. Now, quite a few of you, 111 of you, are in chat at the moment, so we'll just say hello to chat. Hi chat. Hello. Um, a lot of you are probably tuning in because we've got this Twitter bomb thing going. Um, we, this week, are not going to Twitter bomb, but we are going to do something else. Don't go away. Don't go away. We need every single last one of you. So, chat's not going to close, but the lovely people behind the scenes, Sav, is going to post a link into chat right now. And let me show you what that is a link to. It is 
this new Blogspot website that I've created this week, which has basically got the title, the the, the video that I put together of um, the Kickstarter promo. Now, if we go along the top here, we've just got the normal clicky buttons that take you to details about it. So it's in the chat now. You can you can pop along and have a look. Um, I don't mind if you do it. You know, keep, obviously keep the show going. Otherwise, you won't be able to hear what to do. Yeah, and if you're listening on the pre-record as well, this is going to be up and around for quite a while. So uh, here we go. So in in this section, we can go. That takes us to the crowdfunding site, which we can see that's got 138 backers. Thank you very much, everybody. And. Um, we have also got a thank you page which mentions the pledges and we've also got a section which has got vapor mail now in this section we have got a letter now let me read you that letter this is a generic letter let me explain actually let me go to the bottom here you'll see here down the bottom here there is a link one a link to a link three a link four and that's it four links but underneath you'll see in pink there and they're all copy and pasteable that is a lot of the MEPs email addresses so if you click those links what it will do is it will load your email client up and it will post that letter that I have written that is quite generic. Now feel free to add your name at the bottom, but I've kept it generic, right? I'm gonna read it now. With regards to the EU proposal to regulate electronic cigarettes, I would first like to tell you my story. I never wanted to quit smoking. It was a social activity I enjoyed despite the proven health risks from tobacco smoking. I enjoyed using a nicotine containing product that was legal, age restricted and available in many flavors, pipe tobacco, etc. I now use electronic cigarettes. I am amazed at how close to smoking the experience was and within weeks my morning cough had cleared up and I didn't smell like an ashtray. I remained a happy user of nicotine. As an adult I chose not to smoke but to enjoy a flavoured nicotine product which did not burn. Instead it vaporises liquid nicotine and a few other chemicals which can be found in medical aerosol devices such as sprays and inhalers. I use 36 milligrams. Again, feel free to change it when it pops up into your email client. I use 36 milligram e-liquid. Buy from several UK vendors and have not had any problems with, with the way these items are described or sold. I am confident that these devices do not encourage children to start using nicotine as they are intended for adults, just like alcohol or cigarettes. As I rely on e-cigarettes as my chosen level of as I rely on e-cigarettes and my chosen level of nicotine, 36 milligrams, again change it to your level, but I would suggest you don't change it to anything lower than 18. <laughs> um, I do not wish the EU to dictate or regulate the maximum level, flavour or quantity I can purchase. If the proposed level of 4 milligrams per milliliter of nicotine does occur, I will be back buying and using traditional tobacco cigarettes. The change in law would make me use a proven cancer causing nicotine product which is legal and available widely <coughs> cigarettes i implore you to consider opinions and experiences of these devices by the user on their efficacy and availability just like coffee nicotine is a drug some choose to enjoy it is your responsibility to hear us and to take action i respectfully request a considered and personal reply to my points above Please also take the time to watch a short video that tells our story as electronic cigarette users. And then there's the link to the Our Story Episode 1 video. So, do click those links. Do click those links, but I would suggest maybe stagger it over maybe one or two days. Go back to it, send another batch, but keep a track of which ones you send because you don't want to send the same email over and over again. You know, so, so it's just... It means that you you are sending a certain amount of email to a certain amount of people. Also, if your uh, ISP doesn't allow you to uh, send multiple emails, then those emails are there for you to copy and paste into emails. And, and, you know, by all means, write your own letter. But we just try to make it simple for you just to click a link and it generates an email that you can just quickly send. So, as I said, we're not Twitter bombing tonight, but this is another thing that we really all need to be doing. And there are all the MEP's email addresses. So there we go. 
If it doesn't work for you when you click on it, it might mean that you've only got webmail. If you've only got webmail, I'm afraid you're gonna to have to copy and paste those emails into an email and then copy. If you wanna use my letter, feel free, change your name, change your nicotine level, and then and then send them out. Now, they're gonna receive, hopefully, how many people have we got in chat? 107. If we all do it, they're gonna receive an awful lot of emails. Now, next week, we've got another target. We're gonna use the same device, you know, the same method using this website. This website is gonna be up and it's gonna have different pages for different activities that you can all take part in. So that is what we're gonna try and do. Because the Twitter bomb is causing a little bit of spam issues and, and our point, although it is, it is making an impact, it's not the only tool in our arsenal. We are going to use lots of different ways of getting the message out there and across. And email is actually a legal document. You send it to uh, an MEP or an MP and they have to reply if you request one. And if you, if you do do your e own email, please do feel free to nick that la last line of my email that just says, I request you know, a, a personal considered response because you otherwise you will just get a standard response. What you're asking for is them to engage in the argument. And once they do that, there's not really an argument there, is there? Let's face it. <sighs> right. The stream is up and down like a thing that goes up and down a lot. Can I just, can I just have um, the confirmation from Skype chat that uh, the, the everything is okay? Now, obviously, this email list that we got on this page here is, um, well, we, 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 we got it from somewhere. Um, so, you know, th there will be some bounce backs, but there are more email addresses that you're going to see in future shows that will go out again. But And all these email addresses, if one bounces back, Google search it. Add them to the list of ones that you've got to do on another day. Just keep going. Like we've been retweeting and tweeting and retweeting and retweeting and retweeting and retweeting. And retweeting. We can keep doing this, you know, and it's it's a useful tool. One thing I will also say is do please keep it polite. Um, I think we win more arguments with a considered polite argument than we do if we, as we feel that we want to, go steaming in there and, and accuse them of murdering people with tobacco, which is true. Um, but we just want to make our point clearly. So, you know, be, be persuasively aggressive but nice if that makes sense right the stream looks as like it's holding holding tight so there we go um that website is obviously going to evolve over the uh, coming weeks so please do keep checking it out add it to your favorites and um keep checking us out on facebook if we put anything if i put anything or sue puts anything up on the website it will appear on on facebook on the swath campaign website as well on the Facebook page. So there are lots of ways of finding out if this has changed. So there will be more and more activities appearing for you all to take part in. And so we can get our message out there. Yes, I've had quite an interesting week in terms of this as well. Let me just go to this because you don't want to keep looking at that website here. Um, the tweets and the other stuff has generated a little bit of media interest. And we've got a couple of things coming up that I've had a couple of contacts from um, newspapers and things like that so there there are things in the works as soon as i know more and it's being confirmed i will of course let you know we've got complete tr transparency on this what's happening and but rest assured the, the right message is going to get out there um whether it be about swath or whether it be about the whole eu eu e-cig ban they're the same thing but different different media organizations are obviously wanting to take different approaches what's important is the message that we get out there is consistent and positive about electronic cigarettes but very negative about the ban right moving on gosh wow so there we go there's the website done what shall i do now oh yes <laughs> we're calling this They're going to get a lot of vapor mail. Woo! Ooh! The, the stream's up, but it's now trying to talk to me. No, don't talk to me, stream. 
Okay, so what else have I got? I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit discombobulated by all the technical shenanigans going on, but please bear with me. You're a lovely bunch in chat, 111 of you still hanging on with your fingernails. So um, thank you very much. Okay, tell you what, I've got no idea of where I am in the whole schedule of things. I'm going to go to an ad break. I will be back after these short messages. <laughs> Welcome back. Yes, um, right. I also arrived the other day home and I had some vape mail. It was this from Toby from iVapor. And it's the, the the mini BCC from Vape Only. Now, if you've seen my video about the, the, the big brother, then uh, I wonder if making something small makes it better. Well, let's let's find out, shall we? Let's. Hi, everybody. Um, I am going to, as I probably just introduced live on VaporTrails.tv, I'm going to be talking about this. It's the Vape Only Mini BCC Clear Cartomizer. Yes. Um, I looked quite some time ago. Where did I put it? Where's it gone? Where have you gone? There you are. There it is. Um, I looked at this. It's the big version. Now this, the big one, holds 3.5 mil, and if you have a look at the box here, we can see that it holds. It holds. It holds quite a lot of juice. I think 1.6 mil, but we'll have a look. Shall we open the box and take a look? Let's. Right, so box. Let's open the lid. It's clearly marked vape only. There it is. Um, in there, we have got a spare 1.8 ohm head unit. We've got another head unit, which is 2.5 ohm. So you get two head units. We've got a mouthpiece. And we've got the very dinky. Mini BCC vape only. Yes, and if we have a look on the uh, markings, 1.6 mil. Now this looks like it's 510 fitted. Uh, it's got a skirt with no screws on it for an Ego battery. That makes me happy because that means it will fit on the Darwin. Nice, nice, good. Now, my experiences with the big BCC, 3.5 mil, and if we see here, we can make a sort of comparison between the two. Now, the mouthpiece from the little one also fits the big one, so we know that works. Now, with the large, the big brother, 
I did find that the draw tightened up quite considerably because round the base here, I've used it quite a bit, but round the base there, it's got teeny tiny little air holes, teeny tiny. And over, let's say, a week's use, it's really tightened up quite considerably. Quite considerably. Uh, let me give it a burst and uh, let's put the little drip tip in. Flavour and vapour, really, really nice. Really nice. But uh, quite a light draw when I got it. Now it's sort of just approaching too tight. Now, I ran a little bit of canthol wire into the holes last night, and that's loosened it up a bit. But, um, yes, one probably to keep clean with the, the big one. Let's see if the little one has the same size holes. Uh, you can't see them because it's got a skirt. And it's rude to look up its skirt. So I'm not going to do that anymore. Right, so let's fill this up and get some juice in it and see how it compares with its big brother. Um, I'm guessing that what we do is we... Is we un... We unscrew something. Yeah. Let's just have a look at the box. Because on the back here, it's always good to look at the instructions. If we look here, we'll see we've got to take the bottom off of it. Important as well there. Uh, also, I noticed here, attention, please use the BCC Mega slash Mini BCC within output voltage from 3.3 to 3.7, which will bring you better vapor performance. Well. Well, they supply a 1.8 and a 2.5, and I would say at 2.5 ohm, I would probably run that about 4.2. So, um, sorry, vape only. I might deviate from that slightly. Maybe that's why the air, the draw, tightened up. Who knows? So, they say take the base off it. Here we go. <clears throat> and we're in. Oh, right. So there we are. Ooh. Interesting. Okay. So, it's a pourer. It's a pouring moment. Now, the juice that I'm going to put in it... ...is um, the juice that I opened live last week on the show. I'm going to put Evo Hazelnut Cappuccino at 24 milligrams. I've been itching to try this. Let's... Uh, do it that way so we don't get it down the center hole. We'll try and get the full 1.6 in. <gasps> but not go crazy. And then we just put that in there and twist and tighten. So there we are. Right. That's all filled up. Now obviously the uh, coil and the wick is at the base here. So uh, probably just give it a little bit of a stand and let it just do its thing. You can see bubbles rising up there. So just to ensure that it's uh, soaked in, I'm just going to give it a second to think. Now I'm going to run this on a variable voltage Ego battery. And I am going to follow, I'm going to start at the lowest setting just to, because I mean they say on the box that you should go at 3.3 to 3.7. Those are the tolerances they give you. So I'm going to just go a little bit up from 3.2 and screw it on here. That looks quite long and quite cool. <laughs> right, so the good thing about these as well is all put together it looks pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. Um, it's uh, got a little logo on the side there. And uh, I do like the drip tip that comes with it. Obviously, it's just a standard 510, so you can put any 510 drip tip in there, which is great. Right, I think oh, that's had enough time. The bubbles have stopped. I'm at 3.3 volts, as recommended by the packet. Let's give it a vape.
Wow. Flavour of production is really good. I've got a little bit of a cold at the moment, but I am getting hazelnut coffee. Yes. Yes. Good vapour production. No burnt taste. It seems to be just like its big brother. If the drawer doesn't tighten up, I will be a happy man. These are very good. I've also been using the iClear 30, and I have I must say, because of that's dual wicked and dual coiled, it's been unstoppable. I do like the form factor of this, though. It looks very neat. And on a slightly smaller battery, I would say that that's going to be a winner. Out and about, 1.6 mil. That would probably get me through the majority of the day, but I do find on tanks like this that once you get to the sort of dregs of the tank, less so on the bottom fed ones, but once you get to the dregs of the tank and, and it, it doesn't seem to wick as well, it seems to get a bit tired. And I think because, you know, the, the juice has got quite a lot of air in there, it oxidizes quite quickly. So the flavor of the juice changes throughout the day. But I'll be using this all day tomorrow um, because obviously this is Friday night and um, I will be feeding back to you live on Vapor Trails TV. One quick more puff and uh, it's back to me live. White out. Yeah, and I've been spending the day with it, and it's it's working. The drawer hasn't tightened up yet. It seems to be a reliable tank. Um, I see in chat that you were wondering whether it takes the same uh, head units, and, and as far as I can see, it does. I haven't actually tried um, swapping them out, but they do look identical. So it appears that it's it's just a smaller form factor. And I've got it on my little telescope mod here, and it's working very, very nicely. The hazelnut coffee, uh, hazelnut cappuccino from Evo, I would say isn't as flavorful as the the one that I got from uh, safersigs.co.uk. Um, I would say that that's probably just got the edge. There's a little bit more of both flavors going on in it. Um, but you know, you know, it's, it's accurate. It's got a good throat hit and the BCC mini is producing the vapor and the flavor and the throat hit. So I'm, I'm happy with it. Um, and it's neat, it looks good. The one thing I have noticed though, it won't work on my Auto Neo battery. It did look nice, but it didn't work. Well, there we go. That's um, that's this, that's that, and that's, that's done. So, next up, I'm looking at the run order. Uh, yeah, let's hang out with chat for a bit and see what you're all talking about in there. Um, you're all talking about Rachel says she likes my shirt thank you Rachel thank you very much thank you <laughs> um, and uh, yeah you're all chatting away there in political stuff computer stuff we're having computer chats as well because there's craziness going on with certain elements we don't know what it is but we're, we're going to try and sort it out okay so let's talk about smoke without fire a little bit. Um, there you can see it on the monitor there, just there, smoke without fire. Uh, the I've got to say that the response to the Kickstarter has been absolutely amazing. I would like to thank you all for your fantastic pledges of support. Amazing. Thank you very much. And I've cut together a little video to say thank you and to name check everybody who's given any cash to smoke without fire and here it is hello everybody i'd just like to say a big thank you to everybody who's funding smoke without fire on kickstarter and now i'm going to take a little break in the show to read out everyone who has pledged so far number one chris edge number two Dave Dawn. Number three, Russell Webster. Number four, John Miles Dolphin. Number five, Adam Roden. Number six, Andy Fernley. Number seven, Dave Kitson. Number eight, Joe Matteau. 
Number nine, Lee Buxton. Number 10, Kirstie Manson. 11, Christine Hasseltine. 12, Richard Ivers. 13, Lucky for Some, Bob Jones. 14, John Spring. 15, Alan Beard. 16, Roy Baybutt. 17, Paul Kirsten. 18, Barry Ace Bath. 19, David Malik. 20, Danny Hebbenden. 21, Vicky Grant. 22, Stephen Tennyson. 23, Mark Hallerman. 24, Jim. 25, Pete Demody. 26, Peter Van Mayle. 27, Mark Davis. 28, Gordon Walker. 29, G. James. 30, Joe Hangel. 31, Sarah Dasser. 32, Judy White. 33, Edward West. 34, Florian Joyle. Number 35, Kit Vanover. 36, Mark Slora. 37, Krakow Hatui Kane. 38, Jordan. Daniel Jordan. 39, James. 40, vapefox.com.au. 41, Dave Kerr. 42, Karen Jones. 43, Paul Wilkins. 44, David Duval. 45, Tim Orton. 46, Steve Wilkes. 47, Andrew Smith. 48, Joe Ritz. 49, Jerry Sullivan. 50, Tom Neer. 51, Sean Davey. 52, Dan Warren. 53, Darren Smith. 43, 43, 54, Paul Paget. 55, Alex Kimpoka. 56, Melanie Ingham. 57, Sandra Evans. 58, Anthony Johnson. 59, Camel Milak. 60, Hekmat Alru. 61, Leila Weeb Irland. 62, Paul Marshall. 63, Jeanne Rudamelli. 64, Linda Walker. 65, Jesper H. Unialda. 66, Peter Bezorosos. 67, Jeff Coles. 68, Howard Vale. 69, Lorraine Cato. 70, Leon Vukov. 71, Simon Lockwood. 72, Derek Scott Jolly. 73, Kate. 74, Jan Johnson. 75, David Egger. 76, Keith Regan. 77, Christian Schultz. 78, Andy Morris. 79, Paul Collingwood. 80, Saluman Jafar. 81, Margaret Herman. 82, Stephen Carey. 83, Thalilil. 84, Saku Lundberg. 85, Clifford Rogers. 86, Jasper Burford. 87, Anne Scott. 88, Jessica Harding. 89, Phil Hampton. 90, Matt Gurish. 91, Poevi Archman. 92, Nail Pryor. 93, Fake Stick. 94, James Alcott. 95, Alvika Sudak. 96, Ken Hardy. 97, Devaru Burden. 98, Linda Ben Suanson. Ben Susan. Linda Ben Susan. 99, 36, 360 virtual tours. 100, Eric Mancadello. 101, Vincent Brindle. 102, Neil Palmer. 103, Alex McDonald. 104, Ogden. 105, Martin Andrew Buckley. 106, Emmett McGarvey. 107, Graham Kilminster. 108, Richard Flynn. 109, David Griffiths. 110, Sarah Nash. 111, Mark Shaw. 112, Stephen Bayer. 113, Robert Hollingsworth. 114, Mansfield Vapor Lounge. 115, Robert Spence. 116, Miss Belinda Tompkins. 117, Adam Hill. 118, Dawn Randall. 119, LastSig.co.uk. 120, Vincent Beidou. 121, Paul Daniel Kendrick. 122, Steve Walton. 123, Tracy Stewart. 124, Tammy Uoto. 125, Peter Phillips. 126, Robin May. 127, Shane Gibson. 128, Andrew Scotchmer. 129, Disco Des Wilkinson. 130, Safer Six. 131, Jeff Miles. 132, John Holland. 133, John Petlow. 134, Gillian Martin. And to all those people who have done great work, I'd like to say a big thank you. And, um, yeah, look at you all. Look at you all trying to make this happen. It's really, I really, really appreciate it. Oh, quite out of breath now. So, um, I'll say it once more time. Thank you very much. If you haven't given already, we'd really appreciate it if you could spare just one pound. I know times are tough, but one pound does make a difference. We're creeping our way up towards the total. We've got loads of time left. The more money that we've got, the more we'll be able to do. So keep them coming in. A big thank you. And let's hope the list is as long this time next week. Thanks. Woo! I'll say this. Some of you vapors out there have got some crazy names. <laughs> ah, I've got all new respect for newsreaders who have to pronounce really, really exotic names. But you're all welcome. You're all appreciated. Thank you very much. Keep them coming. Right. Coming up after the break, I am going to be looking at something that I've been wanting to look at for a long time. iVapor and iVapor Elixir proudly sponsors Smoke to Vape on Saturday.
proudly sponsors Smoke to Mate on Saturday. Yes, welcome back. And now I'm going to be looking. I've just been told I've got eight minutes. Um, the Kanga Tech Pro Tank Clear Atomizer Series. Um, I've been told by several people that these are very good. Um, might have talked about them on Vapor Trials TV. But as you can see, I've been holding on and not opening it. And I'm going to open it right now and put it together and uh, see if it compares to the iClear 30, which I've got to say I'm really getting on well with. It's really, I'm really getting on very nicely with it because it's dual coil. Um, this is, I believe, single coil, replaceable head units, and I've made a right hash of that. And if we have a look here, we've got all the bits, all the bits. Right, let me see what's in here. We've got a little plinth, we've got the head unit. Now is that a spare or do I have to put that in? I don't know. It's very exciting. I'm going to put that over there. Bye. Um, and in here, if we unscrew that, no, it's got a head unit in it. So I think this is the same case of, of putting it upside down and putting it together, filling it up with juice. Now, with the BCC Mini, um, Toby also sent me some of this juice. This is AM Tob PG liquid. So it's a tobacco flavor. And uh, let's give that a go. Let's fill it up. Now this tank holds, <laughs> this tank holds 3.5 mil of juice. So let's get on with this and put 3.5 mil of juice in this bad boy. La, la, la. Talk amongst yourselves. It's quite a big tank. Squeezing as hard as I can. Try not to get it down the centre hole, as I've famously done in the past with other tanks. Now it's 10 o'clock now, but I'm not going anywhere. I've got another five minutes to go. And I can do this. I can do this. So I'm going to now, that's fairly full. That's pretty as full as it's going to get and you screw the base unit on. Now I can see on the, the, the base that screws in there like that. The, the base has got notches cut out of it which hopefully you can see there. See just there. So that will aid airflow if you're putting it onto a flat device. I'm going to make sure that's as tight as it will go. Let that sit. So that that is in fact a spare. This is the first time I've cracked it open and let's have a look at the drip tip. There's no drip tip. It's all one lovely fluted sort of uh, smooth metal tip to it. So that's nice. I'm going to put it on a variable voltage Ego battery. Use the plinth. Why not? Make it look as nice as possible. And there we have it. That's put together. Now bottom coil give it a little tap. I can't see any bubbles so I assume that that is ready to go. Now let's give it a vape. Um, let's start low and work our way up. So I'm starting at 3.2. Hmm. Not bad vape for first go. AM Tob to me it is a very light refreshing tobacco with no nuts um, it's almost got a slight lemoniness to it very nice okay I'm gonna crank that up a little bit the juice is very clear actually it's um, crystal in fact so I'm gonna go up to about 3.4 Hmm. The draw is very, very light and very nice. It's the Pro Tank. Now, this is from Kanga. I got this uh, from Vaporscape. Um, the juice comes from iVapor from Toby, and together it's working incredibly nicely. Ooh. 
Mm. Good, good plumes of vapor. I'm just going to push it up a little bit to about 3.8. No burnt taste. It's working really, really nicely. Throat hit has increased. 18 milligram juice as well. And it's a really, really impressive throat hit. It's giving me a good wallop. It has got a slight lemoniness to it. It's very refreshing. A very refreshing sort of... I, I, I'm guessing it's called AM tobacco, which means it's a good tobacco for the morning because, you know, everybody likes a fruit juice in the morning. So fruit juice and tobacco, hmm, perhaps. I'll look into that and then report back next week what it actually is. Maybe I'll message Toby. Uh, right, let me tell you how much this is. This is from Vaporscape. Is that the right one? No. Nope. Uh, I got this. It's 16 99 from Vaporscape. And um, as you see in the kit, it comes with one head unit um, and um, don't need a drip tip because it's got one built in. Now, I've been vaping for about three years and I didn't used to like metal drip tips, but I knew people loved them because you can get them all sort of nice shapes and everything. And I must say, it does look lovely and I'm getting used to having metal in my mouth and it's performing very well. Right, so, apologies for the slight technical hiccups. Um, I'm hoping that the recording's worked. <laughs> Otherwise, you might see me again in a little while. And it's been great fun hanging out with you. Um, I've got to add as well from Skype that uh, if you've got any questions about the email page that we've put up or something's not working or you know, you've got any questions, do either stick them on the SWAF Facebook page or on the Vapor Trails forum, there will be a sort of frequently asked questions on there. Now, I'm going to very quickly play you out with this. I want to say thank you, um, everybody who's who's put some money in the pot for uh, Smoke Without Fire. It's all greatly appreciated, and this is why we're doing it, and I will see you next week. Sponsors smoke to me on Saturday. Saturday.